Okay, here's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to update the view component, which is over here, and we're going to add some functionality to this. We will create a text box and a button. The text box lets users enter a GitHub username, and the button lets them search. And what this component is going to do is make a REST API call to api.github.com and fetch that user information from GitHub. And then it's going to print this output, prints this response in the view directly. All right, now how do we get started? Well, we need those controls. We need a text box and a button. So let's add that first. I'm going to create the input. Type equals text. So this is going to be my input. And uh, let's, let me call this username. And then I'm going to create a button with the name search. So we have a text box and a button. Doesn't do anything yet. First, I need to bind the input that the user makes to a member variable of the component. And then I need to bind the search click to a function, a method of the component. Let's do them both. In order to bind the input to a member variable, I need to use the ng model. And uh, let's call the property on our component as user name. And ng model needs to be banana in a box. Now ng model as such will not work because I need to import the module, the forms module. So I'm gonna do that in my view module because this is the module where I'm using that ng model. So I need to import forms module from Angular slash forms. Now ng module ng model should be available to the view component and the text box still shows up, which is great. Now what I want to do is map the button click to a function. So in order to do that, I use the click equals. And then since it's an angular click, I need to put the parentheses over here. And then let me create a method called search. Now I go to my view component, the TS, and uh, we get rid of this. We don't need the test service. What we do need is the HTTP client service. So I'm going to mark this as private HTTP, HTTP client. On submit, on clicking off that button, an execution of the search method. I want to make that HTTP call. So I'm going to create a method called search, which makes a call to the GitHub API, this.http.get. And uh, let me copy over the URL here. It's going to be this minus the username because we're going to be adding the username directly, this dot. What's the username? That is whatever value we have, whatever name we've given over here, which is username. So this dot username. So what's going to happen is when somebody clicks this button after entering the input, this input would have been bound to the username property of the component. So when the search method is called, you know that this dot username in the component has the value that the user has typed in the text box. So this dot username needs to be a property here. So I'm going to declare username as a string, which is going to be empty to begin with. Now this is going to make a get request and it is going to get the data, but now I need to put the data into a local member variable. I do this by doing the subscribe, which is basically my way of telling the observable, hey, once you're done, call this function. So you notice that I'm doing a dot subscribe on top of this thing. I'm basically skipping a step. What I could do is let OBS equals, 
and then do OBS dot subscribe. But what I'm doing is essentially the same. I'm just not assigning this to a variable. I'm just calling the dot subscribe on the return of this method directly. So here on the dot script subscribe, I can call a function which is going to get called when this thing is completed. But I just don't want the function to be called. I just also want it to pass in the result. So I'm going to call this response. So that gives me an opportunity to capture the response that is returned. And here what I'm going to do is this dot response equals response. I'm going to create a member variable called response, which is of type any so that I can hold on to the response. And uh, let me do a console.log of this dot response. Now this is going to refresh. I'll clear out the console. And I'm going to type in my name and click search. The REST API goes through. And here we have the response that we need. What I'm going to do here is print out these values to the view. How do I print the value to the view, to this view component? Well, all I need to do is bind the data that I have over here in the response object to the view. For instance, if I were to just do this, response dot, let's take some name here, login, right? If I do response dot login, and uh, Ignore the error for a bit, I'll tell you what's going on there. If I do a search, you see this, I get the login name. Now I can print a bunch more stuff here. Just for the sake of illustration, I'm gonna do two or three more. So I'm going to say login name is this. I'm gonna put these in paragraphs so that it's nice to read. I'm gonna do a couple more. Right, press save. Ignore this for a bit. Enter the name, click search, and the values get populated. And of course, I don't want the thing to be displayed when there is no response. So what I can do is put this in a div. Div star ngf equals response. In which case, that thing doesn't show up. Now there was a, an error that showed up without doing this. You remember when I removed this? You notice when this wasn't there, you press save. There were a bunch of errors here. It said, cannot read property login of undefined. This was happening because there is this expression here, the Angular expression, which is trying to print response.login. The Angular application is trying to render response.login on first load. And what's the value of response on first load? If you look at the component, you realize that response is actually undefined. There's no value here. So accessing response.login, response.public repos, all these properties on the undefined object is going to return an error. That's what's happening here. It cannot read a property on undefined. So that's why adding that ngif helped. Now that ngif is there, this thing doesn't even evaluate until there is a response object. So you need to handle the objects being undefined when you're referring properties of them in your template. You can do this by wrapping everything inside an ngif so that you don't have that risk. The other thing you could do is to use this syntax with a question mark. You want, let's say you want to print response.login, but only if there is a valid response. If there isn't a valid response, you don't want this to be evaluated. The way to do this is by adding a question mark before the dot. All right, so it's not response.login, it's response question mark.login. You're basically checking if response is valid. If response is not undefined, then try to access the login property. 
If response is undefined, don't even bother accessing it. All right, so that's what this shortcut is. So whenever you're accessing a property on an object in your template, and there is a risk that that object could be null, just follow it with a question mark. And Angular is going to do that check before accessing the property. Now we see here that error goes away. In this case, however, I don't want to do this. I want to use the NGF because this is a better approach. You're not going to see all these labels until there is a value that's available. All right, so that's that's what this is doing. I get a syntax error because I'm not I have an extra div here, closing div. I remove that and everything works fine. So I'm going to explore one more here. Um, I'm going to take the followers URL. I'm going to try this with one other ID, which is not my own. And let's take this one. And you get information about this user over your Oracle ADF. Thanks for following me. Uh, this is the information about this user, number of repos and just So it's basically making that API call for that particular user and getting the values. So this is, in a nutshell, some of the things that we've covered so far kind of put to use for a very simple use case of making a REST API call and printing the values. But I hope this was a good recap of all the things we've covered in this course so far.